um, uh, without wasting much time, uh, let me take this as an opportunity to quickly introduce myself. Uh, I am Ravi Chabe, India Head of uh, Facilities and Premises uh, for, at BNP Paribas. Uh, I manage the BNP Paribas India Solutions business. I have over 16 years of experience in hospitality and facility management uh, industry and have worked over with some of the well-renowned organizations in real estate, uh, that is CBRE, ISS uh, India, ISS UK, and uh, 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 yes, both in India and Europe market. A quick side note of uh, my current organization, uh, which is uh, BNP Paribas. Uh, as I'm sure most of you must be knowing it, if not, I would like, just like to share a quick fact check about BNP Paribas. BNP Paribas has a very rich and, and an old connection with India. Uh, it is one of the first few foreign banks which actually came to Indian market. Uh, this is uh, sometime in mid of 18th century, uh, around 1870 or something, something like that. And they opened their first branch in Kolkata. And since then, I think uh, they have been operating, uh, they have a very uh, uh, rich experience of 150 years plus in Indian market, quite well recognized uh, Indian brand. Uh, additionally, I would like to thank uh, uh, FMJPI and but in particularly Mr. Nilesh Borat uh, for organizing um, uh, this webinar session and bring the entire facility management uh, and real estate fraternity together. Uh, undoubtedly, uh, FMJPI has become one of the most prominent and biggest facility management network and dedicated to the entire industry. Uh, I would like to thank FMJPI for having me here and, and allowing me to speak uh, to the wider team of FMJPI. So thank you very much for that. Uh, now coming back uh, to the webinar topic, uh, uh, which I, am, uh, I have planned to cover in next uh, 20 to 25 minutes. Uh, interestingly, when Nilesh approached uh, me, uh, he, he generally uh, gave me uh, a freedom to choose my own topic. And uh, since I had a choice to pick up my own topic, I was kind of uh, reviewing what uh, topic I should uh, utilize because there are a lot of things which are happening during pandemic, which is very meaningful, very interesting, uh, and, and which uh, fits into the correct context of our corporate real estate services and facility management community. And, and something which is uh, which all of us are currently experiencing it. So the topic I chose to uh, speak today was on us as a leader, as people manager, as team leads, how do we improve performance of our employees through virtual guidance? Now, that's the topic I have chosen. Uh, but before we discuss uh, on the topic further, uh, I would try to and try to answer different uh, ways and means how we can improve our employees performance through virtual guidance i would like to discuss about uh, a common myth and i'm sure every all of you must have uh, seen it or experienced it in some phase of your life uh, the common myth or a bubble which is attached to our industry or real estate industry is that all of us cannot accomplish our work while virtually or work from home which means that most of us have to come to office to fulfill our responsibilities and roles. Now, uh, it, it, in general sense, this is true because I understand uh, there are certain roles, there are certain tasks which cannot be uh, completed or fulfilled without coming, without having a physical presence and it becomes a necessity, uh, but it is a very nature of the job which requires you to come to office. However, uh, pandemic has given us uncertain times, it is an unprecedented times, all of us are changing so as our industries are emerging and a lot of new trends which are coming up in the industry. So, uh, and, and this has forced a lot of the organizations to now start looking at their policies, start looking at their trends in how they can change and integrate work from home uh, and, and make it as part of their policy and accommodate those changes. Now. Therefore, it is it is kind of an important to all of us as a fraternity to come together and decide whether we are ready for this change, are we adapting enough for this change, and whether is there any training or any change uh, the new uh, or our style of working should, should change in that sense has to be looked upon. So the million dollar question again stays with us whether we are we are changing ourselves or not, or we are particularly embracing the change which is coming to us whether we do hold that competitive advantage, uh, whether we do have our edge in our workforce, because now uh, we see work from home is 
definitely inevitable substance. So that's that's uh, that's urge is going to help us to remain competitive and leaders like us all of us have to adapt those different changes and ways and address the employee concerns and ensures that the motivation remains very high even though they are working virtually uh, so before we try to untie the knots of uh, 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 different ways and means where we can improve the performance let me share a quick survey which was conducted in us by a company called buffer and um, what they did is they reached out to a certain group of employees and, and they asked them uh, open-ended questions. And the open-ended questions were, uh, one was the biggest benefit of working from home or remote working. And the second question was, what are the challenges? What are the struggles the employee uh, faced while they were working remotely? Uh, so uh, let, me, let me give you some findings what came out in that survey. Uh, the biggest benefit which came out working remotely was uh, employees were very happy uh, having the ability and flexibility uh, of their schedule. So uh, there were less restrictions, there were more of uh, 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 flexibility allowed there. Uh, employees were very happy to work from anywhere. So a lot of people have to travel to their native place. And this really applies to us also. Uh, there's, and especially for the IT, ITS segment and the banking world, where we have a huge number of staff, which actually have moved from different cities and migrated to our metro cities, uh, also require that flexibility to work from anywhere. Uh, the third biggest benefit which came out uh, was uh, uh, not having to commute. Uh, uh, and I'm sure all of us right now, who are working uh, in metro cities will relate to this. Uh, we spent considerable amount of our time while commuting to and fro from the office. So this was the time which was utilized uh, with spending time with their family members. So employees actually uh, appreciated the, the benefit which came out from work from home. However, now let's, let's discuss the challenges which, which came out from employees and what struggles they were looking at working remotely. Uh, the first thing which came out uh, on working remotely was the, the lack of collaboration and communication. Uh, when I say that lack of collaboration and communication, because this were happening virtually, uh, the teams were not comfortable or still getting into the groove of working remotely. So they, they felt uh, they were not collaborating enough, uh, the ideas were not generating enough, and the communication channels were very limited because we are only doing a virtual communication rather than uh, earlier we had a chance to meet in person have a lot of corridor talks which which was kind of missing at this point of time in in in, in this new covid era coming to the second biggest struggle which employ uh, which a lot of employees shared was loneliness uh, and and this is very subjective because a lot of people who uh, came uh, to cities to operate may not be staying with their families they might be sharing accommodation uh, so loneliness and lack of inclusiveness was another bit largest finding wherein the organizations were not were communicating enough but it was still not very inclusive in nature uh, the third biggest uh, uh, finding or a struggle which came out was uh, in terms of not being able to unplug so there were extended hours because employees were at home uh, the peop the leaders actually uh, uh, ensured that the 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 work was delivered on timely manner so it ended up in resulting into having an extended hours so that was another challenge which a lot of people came up, came back with uh, distractions at home uh, not all of us are blessed with uh, uh, or equipped with uh, space at home where uh, where they can work from uh, so that was another big challenge uh, in general terms uh, the common experience what I have I have seen is a lot of people their beds have become their workstations so uh, that kind of uh, distractions came in and and the family was always around to watch and and hear their conversations uh, the other uh, big challenge which uh, the employees also shared was uh, 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 staying motivated uh, uh, since they were not going to office uh, the feeling of inclusiveness the feeling of uh, being motivated excuse me, was missing in the entire conversation. Uh, then moving on to uh, the other subject of uh, uh, struggle or challenge which employees faced was uh, getting less of vacation time. Uh, everybody, uh, due to COVID, as we all know, there were no flights operating, people had to work from home, uh, there was no vacation time, uh, and that was a general feedback which also came out in the survey. Uh, 
the the last and but not the least uh, another challenge which the employees shared was uh, finding reliable Wi-Fi. This was more related to a technology challenge. Uh, uh, so uh, having a, a reliable Wi-Fi which will enable them to operate from home or anywhere was one of the other challenges which which the team faced and the employees expressed in that survey. Now, on the basis of these key findings and some benefits and challenges which I just spoke about, uh, as leaders, we all have to start looking at and making our making changes, small changes. This could be not a very major or a big change in the way the way we operate at this point of time and engage with a wider team, but try to address those challenges because these challenges which was mentioned in the survey by Boffer, even though it, it the survey was in US, but it is highly apl applicable across globe and and to India too. As, as slowly we're becoming a global village, this is kind of a uh, output we will be more or less uh, seeing it. So, so, so what happened? How do we address these challenges? Uh, now, what I have done is I uh, to address these challenges, I've prepared a small list of things. Uh, these are very minor changes which I have adopted in my daily routine. Uh, this is generally very beneficial while we operate. It always gives you uh, that edge and, and helps you to engage with your employees and overall increase their motivation level and performance. Uh, I, I generally call uh, these are 12 pillars uh, for me to operate during COVID era. However, uh, a small disclaimer, this, uh, the pillars which I will be speaking upon, the 12 pillars are basically going to be uh, applicable for both pre-COVID, during COVID and post-COVID scenario too. So the only difference on these pillars are now these discussions will happen virtually rather than in person or physical. Uh, what do I call these pillars? I call them NWOW. Uh, NWOW, N-W-O-W. So NWOW stands for new ways of working. Now, how do we uh, emulate this new ways of working and how do we make changes in ourselves? Uh, so what I'm going to do in this session in, in the next few minutes, I'll be explaining these 12 pillars and try to explain the uh, the leaders on call, the, the entire fraternity, how do we address uh, those challenges which were mentioned and pretty much applicable to all our employees while we are dealing with this new trend and change in the market. Now, what is the first pillar of, uh, of new ways of working? The first pillar, what I thought uh, for the new way was, of working was providing a clear direction, ensuring there is confidence uh, emphasized on our employees and providing that resilience. These are unprecedented times. These are uncertain times. Uh, business are uncertain. We know uh, uh, employees are a little worried and, and it is a responsibility of the leader to ensure that the employee get back that energy, that excitement. Uh, so the mandate is to give a clear, clear direction to an engagement for uh, through virtual guidance and fueling the employees with the energy. Uh, what does it result in? It results into that employee will be motivated and engaged. Now, uh, general, in general sense, uh, and especially it applies during COVID, a lot of employees will rely on leaders to give that direction. Now, if these directions are not being given and, and the setting up tone is not happening from beginning, it, it might be a, a, a start of debacle. So it is really important that all of us as a leader start owning it and give, and ensuring that uh, uh, confidence is emphasized on our uh, staff and we provide them a clear direction to move forward in this tough times. Uh, the second most important pillar, what I think uh, in this entire uh, uh, new ways of working is encourage innovation. Now, when I say innovation, in, in, in broader sense, innovation doesn't mean that you have to bring in new technology. It is it is not at all a new technology. It is think, doing things differently is also a new innovation. And that is exactly what we are planning to achieve during COVID era. Uh, the, uh, we as a whole team, as an entire facility management fraternity trying to achieve it. So how do we do, how do we bring innovation? Uh, we encourage all our employees uh, to spend time to do, do things differently what they were doing during pre-COVID era and do things differently. Uh, in this scenario, we have also observed uh, this is a general consensus and not to my surprise and to uh, to all of you right now who are listening on the webinar is employees become risk averse, which means the ability to take risk has reduced and 
providing them the platform of innovation will help them to take some risk which is which is calculated and and time bound so it is important that we give them the platform we encourage them uh, uh, and and uh, encourage them to coming up with good ideas which will help them to grow and also the organization to grow uh, the third biggest pillar what i feel uh, is inclusiveness uh, when i say inclusiveness is a very broad term uh, in my uh, aspect was is uh, that we want all the teams to work together virtually and and achieve the organizational goals and objectives uh, in inclusiveness the the most important topic which comes in people's mind is bringing communicating and communicating effectively and when i say that uh, it is it is an it is an important leadership aspect to ensure that the employees are communicated and communicated effectively so and that will create the the uh, the environment of inclusiveness ensures the policies and ensures uh the safety of an employee has been taken care of uh share with them what is going on what is the vision of the uh, organization and in, in what aspect the organization is looking to engage with their employees and that would really have help the employees to settle their nerves these are anxious times these are in, uh, anxiety times and a lot of employees psychologically are disturbed in terms of achieving those uh those stress levels so it is important that um, uh, uh, to a leader to provide that platform and have an inclusive environment the fourth pillar which i want to uh, highlight here is recognition uh, recognize your employees uh, and when i say that uh, i would urge all the leaders on call all the people all the team leads right now to to work on a time ma uh, time management module where you recognize each and every employee connect with them please understand please remember people work every day and when i say people work every day people should be recognized every day too and this recognition uh, uh, fortunately is uh, is not happening uh, virtually uh, sorry it is not happening in person so it has to happen virtually now it is a responsibility of a leader to effectively recognize all your employees what is the result of recognizing every day it will help you it will provide a strong signal not only to your uh, uh, employee who's been recognized but to the wider team and this will emulate a behavior of of ensuring that inclusiveness that uh, motivation levels are high and engagement levels will be skyrocketed so it is important recognition which is our fourth pillar in the new ways of working the fifth pillar uh, and the sixth pillar which i am going to just speak about in some time is 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 basically uh, 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 very similar in nature but i i would urge leaders to uh, spend some time and understand and do it uh, it's a very important tool to uh, do it uh, so currently what uh, we have to do as a leader is hold a 5 minute session and this 5 minute session will not be only limited to your direct reports it should be a step one step down two uh this is think of a scenario where you are doing a virtual walk around with your employee and or doing a, a corridor discussion or a meeting or a one on one discussion with your employee so try to do that 5 minutes uh hold a uh, session hold a 5 minute session it will help the employee to engage with you it should be an open ended it should not be related to it can be related to both personal and professional but uh ideally you know, the scenario should be uh, it should be an open ended discussion the employee should get an opportunity to ask questions and not limited to direct reports uh this generally helped uh the engagement level in the wider team and the sixth point which is very similar to fifth what i uh, the sixth pillar which is very similar to fifth pillar which i have already mentioned is provide opportunities for remote social interactions now what is happening right now uh pre covid we always used to come to office we used to meet our teams uh, in person there was a lot of corridor discussions there were huddle up meetings there were other discussions formally informal which was happening around uh, in the office environment now there is a lack of such interactions which are happening so it is important as a leader uh, whenever we have our team meetings whenever we have our discussions with a wider team we should ensure we provide them an opportunity so that there are social interactions happening so either and, and leaders have a freedom to choose either they can do it at the beginning of the session or at the end of the session uh, and and this could be as simple as asking them questions like how was their weekend or or conducting a a, a friday coffee session uh, which is generally something which i personally do it for with my wider team and ensure we 
don't only talk uh, uh, professional work but also personal things and and it really helps the entire team to gel and interact so it it is one of the important pillars too uh the seventh most important pillar which i would like to bring to everybody's attention is uh, uh is uh, established team guidelines now when i say established team guidelines uh there are there are teams uh, remote works looks different to different people we need to understand that part which means a need of a person would be different uh, to what a leader would uh, would have their needs now in that scenario as a team leader we all have to collaborate so we need to ensure there are there are set guidelines which are set up within the team and the core times have been shared to everyone which helps not only employee to come in and 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 uh, collaborate but also engage which really helps uh, the overall uh, uh, environment and and in- encourages innovation uh, the ninth pillar which i really want to touch upon is equip your employees now when i say equip your employees uh, just this is not limited uh to providing them laptops or mobile phone or doing a mobile reimbursement because i think these were something which was generally available pre covid i'm sure it is available during covid and it is going to be available post covid too uh but when i say equip your employees uh train them uh definitely that is important also ha- uh, held up a small question answer sessions there are certain obstacles which an employee must be facing which is very important as a leader to address those concerns uh, in 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 my specific example what we are doing is we are doing a small survey and this is con- in context to what we are doing at bnp paribas now we are also doing a small survey to find out if our employees generally require uh, uh, to be equipped in terms of ergonomic chairs in terms of workstations and and there is a, a decision which is made at exco level that whether we more really want to uh, uh, do something on those lines and have a new policy because work from his home is not going away uh, virtual working is going to be staying here for a longer time uh, though we wish uh, that covid could, wouldn't have hit us but now since it is there i know definitely we need to work and equip all our employees uh, the the 10th pillar which i would like to mention here in the entire conversation is about trust uh trusting your employee this is the best thing a leader can do uh by suspending all their disbeliefs ensuring showing the trust showing that confidence in an employee that they are doing the right thing backing them up uh and 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 these are tough times uncertain times there are a lot of employees who does not know what the future holds uh so trusting employees giving them the opportunity uh, of of communicating sharing them uh over over communicating will really help so those uh, those aspects really helps the employee in their motivation level and once the trust is established uh i think i think overall work performance improves so as as improving a work performance this is this is again not only applicable during uh, covid time this is pre covid post covid both all the aspects which i have so, so far mentioned as i mentioned in my disclaimer this is generally applicable at all times but as a leader during uh, during covid era we all have to ensure that we are uh, emphasizing on tr- and trusting our employees the 11th uh, pillar which i have uh, uh, dis- i want to discuss and bring in the new ways of working is reinforcing the organizational values now every organization has got certain values it is part of their ecosystem has a leader we all have to ensure that ecosystem is maintained and those organizational values are reinforced uh, so so it doesn't matter whether we are generally managing uh, our operations virtually or we are managing our operations in office but the organizational value system should still not be compromised and it should be our top priority it should be abided by at any cost uh that's the 11th uh, uh, pillar the 12th pillar which i want to like to bring to everybody's notice is uh, set up a development plan for your employee now uh, setting up a development plan is an important tool uh, uh, in in terms of communicating with your team members it's the best way to encourage and have a consistent behavior from your team uh, it is the best way to uh, manage your team remotely uh and the development plan should have uh, should be smart in nature uh with smart uh, goals and objectives which is quantifiable and achievable 
Uh, this can be done in, our, in your regular one-to-ones, ensuring that your teams are, uh, are uh, well-versed with what is the expectation from the management and also support and guide them uh, or coach them virtually. So with all these small changes, we will be able to achieve uh, uh, the overall uh, and increase the performance of uh, overall through providing that virtual guidance. Uh, and again, uh, uh, as I've mentioned, uh, uh, please note uh, the NWOWs, which I've said, the 12 pillars, the new ways of working 12 pillars are, are very subjective in nature. And, and whatever I have shared these 12 pillars are uh, something which I've learned from my personal experience. However, uh, uh, it is uh, all the entire fraternity and the leaders, uh, it, is op it is open to them to customize it, increase, decrease or add new ways of working, which would help them uh, in terms as they know their strength and the foundations of their uh, employee and will help them uh, to uh, achieve the organizational objective. So please uh, use this and vows and you can customize it and to your best suited needs. Uh, so that brings to the end of our 12 pillars, which I've just spoken about. Before I uh, sign off, I once again, I would like to, uh, uh, I would like to thank uh, FMJPI and Mr. Mr. Nilesh Borat uh, once again for organizing organizing this webinar session. And I really look forward uh, for such more events to happen and such more connects to happen. Uh, uh, so thank you very much for attending this webinar. I'm sure. Uh, uh, I hope everybody is uh, safe, healthy, and uh, and I'm sure everybody has learned something in terms of improving uh, the employee performance through virtual guidance. Uh, happy weekend to all. Uh, thank you very much uh, for attending this webinar. Thanks, Nilesh, again. Thank you.